Welcome to the Electronics Tools for Beginners video series. I'm going to be doing a video every single day, so make sure you subscribe to make sure you don't miss those. Also be a playlist down in the description and at the end of the video as well to go and watch more of the video series. So make sure you check them out. So in today's video I'm going to talk about LCR meters. Do you need one? Well it depends on what you're doing. If you're designing things which may use inductors, you need to use tune inductors because you do calculations, then yes you need an LCR meter because you need to check inductance. If you're doing any kind of refurbishment on equipment or repairs, you're going to need an LCR meter, or at least an ESR meter or something like that, so you can do capacitor checking. It can be handy tools for all sorts of things, but to be honest, I use them mostly for checking capacitors. I rarely use them for checking inductances myself, and obviously the R part is resistance. So if you don't know what LCR means, it's L is for inductance, C is for capacitance, and R is for resistance. Resistance means you can actually do low resistance measurements to a point as well. They're checking things like reactants. So it's not just resistance, it's also reactance. So you can actually see how something performs under AC. So I've got a selection here, just a few of the ones I've got. I've got a couple more laying around the place, but I'll start with this one. This is a really common meter. A lot of people use these. You can get these really easily. So it's a DER D5000. I'll put some links down, down below for these. Interesting to get these things. I think I did a review on this thing a while ago. I can't remember. But this is probably LCR meter. I've also got a Unity UT612, I think it is which is out of my other room there, and it's basically got exactly the same feature set and same kind of accuracy as this thing got, only it's cheaper, I think. I might try a link for that as well. I've done a review on that one, so I'll be link for that one. Here is a LC meter. It doesn't do resistance, does inductance capacitance. This is by almost all digital electronics. Unfortunately, the guy who's made these, he died a dozen years ago now, unfortunately. He seemed to be quite a talented guy, and unfortunately he's passed away. So you may see some YouTubers have got these. I've seen a couple of people have got these sorts of things by ADE. This is basically measures capacitance and inductance as well. And here I've got a peak ESR meter. This isn't actually an LCR meter. Peak do make an LCR meter, but this is meant for checking things like electricity capacitors and ESR. That's what it's, this one's particularly based on. But this is what I use my meters mostly for is checking capacitors. So I thought this would be relevant to include it in here. And also up here on my shelf, I've got an East Tester ET4401, which is another LCR meter which I have done a review on. I'll chuck a link down below for that as well, so make sure you check that out. I should really turn one of these things on so you can see what I'm talking about. Also, I've got this other cable here. This is for the DER. This used to come with some little clip leads, a bit like this, but shorter. And I modified it. Oh, it was, is this one I've put on, or it was these ones I've put on? I can't remember, I think it's these ones. So I've got longer clip leads so I can actually test in circuit easier. I did a video on that a while ago. Anyway, so I'll turn this one on. And so this is auto mode, so it should basically detect anything it's connected to. So if I We'll go on to a capacitor. This uses a full wire measurement, which means it's got better accuracy. And it's detected a capacitor. There we go. 101 microfarad. That's what it's found. And this is a 120 microfarad. But that's 21 kilohertz. So if I go into manual mode for capacitance, series capacitance, I'll change the frequency down to 100 hertz. And it's a bit closer, 104 microfarad now, a bit closer. This sort of capacitor is you're measuring at basically 100 hertz or 120 hertz. Different kinds of capacitors, maybe you need different frequencies depending on what you're actually doing, what they're designed for. You saw me change frequencies there, which means you can check reactants of things and how things perform at different frequencies. If you're also just checking capacitors, you can actually use the multimeter. Like, here I've got a Fluke 175, this has got capacitance on it just here. Alright, so if I want to check this with this meter, let's get the cables. Change the capacitance. I'm just going to stick them on there. There you go, 107 microfarad. See, it's only about three counts out from what this was saying. So if you just want to check a capacitor value and not much else, you can just use your multimeter. But limitations. Some multimeters can't do very low capacitances or very high capacitors. Maybe you could say 100 nanofarad up to maybe 1000 microfarad. It'd be like the range would be typical for what you'd expect. Maybe you get better. Let's look at this one. This is the peak ESR meter. Let's turn it on. So this is 105.8 microfarads and 0.53 ohms ESR. ESR is an important factor when you're doing repairs. You want to check capacitors are actually performing okay. They're not actually got too much leakage and stuff like that. So let's try this one. I haven't used this meter in a while actually. Let's pair it up. So this isn't doing too well today. You can't read that capacitor. <laughs> not this one anyway. Yeah, different capacitor probably be fine, but obviously not this one. 
All right, so I've got a different capacitor here. This is a 273 marking, which is uh, it's an X2 cap, I think it is. So 273 is 27 nanofarad. What do we get? 26.2. It's working fine on this capacitor. This is not electrolytics. All right, so I just grabbed a inductor. I don't actually know what this one is. This is some kind of DC filtering inductor. I don't even know what this thing would measure. I have no idea. Let's find out. Oh, 10 micro Henry. That looks fine. And we'll check on this as well. Oh, this one. Ten micro Henry. At one kilohertz. No worries. So I mean there's lots of options out there, there's loads of different testers. You even got things like the three two eights, those little Chinese testers, which can do some kind of testing as well. Um, they're cheap, they can do quite versatile things, but I don't know how much I really trust those things. I do actually have one. Yeah, got one of these myself, I actually have one. Let's actually hook up to it and see what this thinks of this, shall we? No, can't measure it. So I can't do any data. And the other thing I've got here is this other plug-in attachment for the DER. And this is still four wire. It's got two, I don't know if you can see it on here or not, but there's actually two tracks come down. And they link onto here. So it's still four wire up to this point. And then you can use these in, in circuits so you can probe on service mount components, stuff like that. And test that way. Very handy as well. But like I said before, do you need one? It depends on what you're doing. It's handy to have one. I definitely say go and get one. If you're looking at ESRs of capacitors, you're worried about electrolytic capacitors and uh, doing servicing kind of repairs, then you need an ESR tester like this. This meter here is a bit more comprehensive. This can do in circuit testing, this can't reliably. Can kind of do it, but it's not 100% reliable. You have to keep that in mind. In circuit measurements, you only really do ESR in circuit. The actual capacitance value will be wrong. How wrong it is depends on the circuitry that's attached to that capacitor. I'd say if you're going to get something, get one of these. These are good meters. I trust this thing. And any other tests I've been doing with my other meters, when I've got another meter I've purchased one or been given one to review, I've always compared it against this, and this has been like my standard. And they've always been really close. You know, very close reading. So this is like the one I trust completely. Anything I test is gone against this one. And over here is another capacitor tester. This is an old school one. This is, I think, 70s, maybe late 60s. This does resistance and capacitance as well. And it does leakage tests and things like that, which is something none of these other meters can do. This can do leakage tests. So I'm actually in the process of restoring this one. I've got some more parts I'm waiting for to come. I need a new iTube. But I'll be doing a video on this, so you watch out for this coming up. It should be very soon, actually. I'll do some restoration on this thing. I've done some work on it already. And I'm just waiting for, I think, just the tube to arrive now, because the original tube's a bit dull. And then I can put this thing back together and put it back into service. This would be good for testing electrolytic leakage or other caps as well. You can do other stuff too. You make sure that they actually survive the rated voltages. This can do capacitance measurements to tell you what the actual value is. Pretty handy. Old, but handy. And it's also fairly chunky. But you know, it's got a different purpose. This does stuff these other meters can't do. Don't forget to check out the playlist here. There's another playlist here. If you think you should watch a subscribe link right here if you haven't already subscribed. And there's a Patreon support link if you want to support the channel. And give me a monthly donation and get some perks. Catch you later.